So Mitchell is the program today, and what we're basically going to do here is take a look at how we can use Report Pro and its interaction with Mitchell. And um, as we're going through here, I will throw a couple poll questions out just to give you an idea. They're just a keep track of who's hanging in there and who's paying attention or whatnot because sometimes people sign on and they say uh, and they walk away. So South Park Automotive or Park South Automotive, thank you for letting me know you can see and hear me. Um, that's good. And so when those polls go out, just answer them and I'll pull them down as soon as possible so we can move on forward. All right, very basically, ProPack. Uh, you have a button there in Mitchell you can click on. It opens up a ProPack launcher. And we're going to write the Report Pro here. Okay. And I always like to start out with a brief description of your main screen here. Uh, this here empty space that is right now I call the view window because whatever reports or whatever invoices or other tech worksheets, et cetera, that you're using, they will appear in this screen here. And this is where you're going to get a chance to look at things and see how they're, what's going on. Quick invoice. Whatever invoice you're currently working with in your management system, uh, if you uh, click there, and the customer's name here is Douglas Johnson, his invoice is going to print out automatically just by a single click there. Um, if you're writing up a technician uh, sheet, if you're still using tech worksheets down here, uh, clicking on Quick Vehicle will open up and send out a tech worksheet to the printer. And if you have it set up such in the settings, we'll also do a paper inspection sheet for you and send that right out. So those are the quick reports that you have there. Anything that appears in this main window. All right, thank you, Julio. Um, people are still reporting, and you can hear me, and I like that. Thank you. Anything that appears in this main window, all these actions can work on. So if you just want to print whatever's in this window, click on print, and you're good to go. So if you run a report or something like that, that's what that would be. If you want to export whatever's in this window, uh, click on here. Figure out which format you want to send it out. For example, if it's a report, you might want to send it out to Excel or something of that sort, or just make a PDF. It's up to you. Well, when you make that decision and you choose what format you're going to use, just hit Save and then um, do whatever you wish with that document. Email, pretty obviously. Anything that's in this window, uh, be it an estimate, report, or whatever, you can email it through your online email program that you have set up on your PC. The next section is page, and again, this all affects what's in this window. You got one zoom in and zoom out level, so you can get an overall look at what you're looking at. Piece of cake. If it's a multi-page document, you can go through it by clicking the next and previous buttons, and it's just going to show you going back and forth, different pages. And if it's uh, more than two pages, of course, you can continue. The reload button. If you go into your management system, be that Mitchell at this point in time, and make any changes to this ticket, add a job or whatever is going on, well, what you want to do is go back here and hit reload so that those changes, our software actually looks and sees that software, sees that change, and re-renders this image here based on those changes that you might have made. If we use Outlook as their email, we'll go through there, yes. If Outlook is the configured email program, that you have set on the computer that you click this on. Mine isn't configured right now, so when I hit it, it's going to come up and tell me that I don't have it configured. But if Outlook is the program of choice, that should automatically bring it up. And uh, if you give it a moment, it's going to spit up and say, oh, I didn't set anything up, and here comes the window that tells me where i got to set it up. So all this should already be set up. If you have any issues, uh, you can go right to the email setup wizard and click on that. It should helpfully take you through and send yourself a test email. And um, also, you can also uh, send an email when you invoice a load. Yeah, a voice. You can send an email when you load an invoice and to a customer, too, so you can send two copies. But we'll get back to that. Uh, reload again. Anything that you change in your management system, you want to reload and take a look here. Uh, if you've been on with us for a while, you might remember this window down here and all this being our search window. Well, though this still exists, and there's other reasons for it, we now have it up here. This describes or shows your total work in progress as it's displayed right in your management system right now. Um, and the nice thing here is you don't have to go back and forth from the management system to get to a new repair order or whatever. All you have to do is find it here, double click on it, and it's going to pull it right up for you. The search function is also then built up here. If you go into a work order search, you can search by RO number or you can go by the customer name. 
And once you put the customer name in, hit return. Any vehicles related to that customer, first and last name, you can look up and get right into the invoice. Or as I said, if you know the invoice number, you can go there and you can open that invoice just again by double clicking on it and it should pull it through. Of course, I'm still in a work tech worksheet, so it's going to keep pulling those back. But if we're in an actual invoice setting here, it's going to bring that information through for you and it's going to matter what format that you have that set in. So that's your first, that's your home tour basically what I like to call it. A little more before I move on. On this column here on the left, at the top, we have a whole lot of different types of invoice basics that I'll go over when I go over customized invoices. You have a whole lot of reports available to you. In the vehicle screen here, categories that were performed, um, static multi-point inspection sheets, and all sorts of things can be brought up from here. So do a little exploration and see what's up. Uh, down here, you got management. How many appointments do you have by date? Uh, you set that up there and use a start date, so maybe we'll go back a couple of days and redo that. And if I'm doing demos, so I'm not going to have a whole lot. If I have customer duplicates, I can run this here, and it's going to show me who's being duplicated and where. So take a look through all these reports, and again, these tools all up here will work with whatever you got going on down here. Marketing. You want to market out to your customers' birthdays and whatnot? Well, Look up who's got a date of birth. Uh, everyone's born on, um, what do you call it, New Year's Day. That's crazy. But anyway, referrals, et cetera, can all be looked up there. You have some counting that you can run here. And yeah, if you have mobile manager, how well you're doing with your inspections, details, and pro pack, how many customers. This is a good one. If you have customers stopping your text messaging, you can run this report here and find out who they are. Okay, and that'll show that that Bert Kowser guy, uh, that's a bummer, he stopped it. That's me. I was just playing with it. But um, they can stop it by hitting STOP, or they can start it back up by START, piece of cake. So anything that you get here appears in this window. All these tools that I just explained to you will work with that. So are there any questions about that? those basic items right there? All right, next thing we're going to look at is customize. You got a lot of customizability here. Um, if we go back into Mitchell and we take a look at a repair order, you all should be pretty much familiar with what a repair order looks like on the Mitchell. It's pretty basic. And um, sometimes just because of the way they have the layout here with your parts and labors and stuff like that makes it really difficult to look at, uh, really difficult to figure out what's going on. So we now have given you the ability to take this plain Jane report here that you see and make something that you can put in your customer's hands and use it as advertising, use it as a way to bring them back. So I'm going to go through how we're going to make those changes just by going back to Report Pro, go to Customize, go to Invoice, and open this. So this is your full customization screen. And here's, here's the thing I want you folks to understand here. Uh, we're going to introduce a whole lot of things to your invoice because think of it this way. If you're sending out uh, mail reminders, if you're sending out mail advertising, and you send out a whole mess of them. They say if you get a 5% return, that's supposed to be pretty incredible. So you spent that money on thousands of the uh, mails that you sent. I want to see emails, but we're talking about snail mail here. And 5% is totally doable. They're, they're very happy with that. Well, shouldn't every one of your customers leave your shop with an invoice? Absolutely. You now have 100% penetration in the market. Every customer that's in your shop, if you put an invoice in their hand or send one digitally, they got it, and they're going to look at it, and you know what? Because you're doing a lot of work and spending their money, they're looking at it. So why not make that document something that they're going to be interested in looking at and possibly getting a better relationship with your shop, building your brand, and seeing what is coming up in the future? So what we're going to do here is take that very basic um, invoice and make a big deal out of it. Here's all different formats, and what you can do is you can click through to different formats, and this is basically your foundation where we're going to start, and you can see we start off pretty much looking like uh, what we came off of. Um, if you want to go to Professional Legacy, again, it's another format that you can go. It's going to start throwing some stuff in there. The one format that everyone seems to like the most is Modern. But before I jump into that, if you have pre-printed uh, soft um, uh, paperwork that you need to get through, you can choose one of these, and all that pre-printed information should hopefully be at the stop top, and you should be able to get through that. Once that's gone, then move on to the next format. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the modern format. 
and we're going to make all our changes on that. And already the layout's changed where we got our things, services all laid out in an easier to read fashion where a customer doesn't have to go back and forth, et cetera. But let's look at how much more we can change. So we go up to customize. First thing, shop probably has a logo, so let's put it on there. So whenever you select a box, like these boxes here, are selected, that item is now going to be on the paperwork. And if we installed your software, you should already have your logo in, in there and on, but if you don't or you change it, show you how easy it is to find it. In your C drive on your computer, we have created a bot folder. So if you go to your C drive and you see bot there, now ignore the other ones because I do multiple demonstrations. And in that bot folder, you're going to see a samples folder. And if you go to the samples folder, there is where you can lay and put your logo. So you can slide it right in there and make good use of it. Or as you're going to see, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Basically, what I need to do here is tell my software where to find my logo. So click here, and it's going to take me right into the samples folders I showed you. And today, I'm going to be a bolt-on guy, so let's find the bolt-on guy. Click and put him right on there. So the bolt-on technology is now connected to my logo for my, my document. As we go through here, we can choose what we want. If we want to show a spouse, choose it. If you're interested in showing what time the vehicle came in, choose it. When a customer pays and there's a zero balance and you print the invoice, do you want a big page stamp on there? And again, you don't necessarily have to print these things. We can be sending these out. You want to save a little bit of paper because it might get a little crazy. Abbreviate your top, your header on the first page, after the first page. And then if there's any labels that you want to put out, whatever's there, hide them. So you can save a little bit of ink. All right, so a question that came by, back, uh, Modern will show jobs, subtotals, like if we have five jobs under a category, uh, will it show subtotal for each job? Um, as we go through this, you're going to notice, and I don't know how if I'm saying your right, name right, Iqbal, um, as you go through this, you're going to see there's lots of different options for how we're going to display that. So, again, you're asking some great questions right before you get to them, so hang on and watch what happens. So that's our header. Let's move down to the body. And here's a big thing. If you just made changes in the header and you don't want to do anything else, hit save and close before you close this out or you're going to lose all your changes. All right, body. We're going to start adding color to the document. Now, so again, this is 100% getting into people's hands, so why not make it a little more attractive to them so they can look at it and uh, go, wow, this is kind of cool. And make your ROs, your invoices, stand out from other people. So start choosing some good color combinations to add to your your invoice. And again, if you're printing these things, yes, you're going to need to do a printer, uh, color printer, but if you're not and you're sending them digitally to customers, it's not going to make a big deal. You can choose whether or not to show parts and part numbers and whatnot. If I select these like this, they will show up on the repair order. But as you know, a lot of you guys got competition with people shopping on Amazon and whatnot, so you may not want to put this information out there because you don't want them to come back a couple of days later telling them, hey, I just found that part for half the price and I have to go through all the explanation, how it's from China and all these other things that you might need to describe why it's so much cheaper. Um, you do your job totals and parts totals and everything as you wish. You force the jobs together. You can, again, cut things down. Show only the first line of each description by selecting that. If you want to show the whole description, deselect it. Um, if you're adding lines to the descriptions and you don't want them to show up later, you can select this and remove them from there. Last on the body page is a watermark. My imaginary shop is JB Automotive. A watermark is something that appears in the background. So like if you've been like me where you tried to copy your paycheck, to cash it twice, and that watermark comes up uh, showing that it's fake, well, we're not going to show it's fake. We're going to show that you just went to JB Automotive and that um, you like our brand. You're checking us out and see what's going on. Okay, so now... Let's move on to the next section. Footer, the bottom. Your shop has a website. You're paying money for it. You've got it set up and all that. Why not use it? Why not have it up there? So selecting here, it's going to show the shop website right on my document. And we're going to build a QR code for the link to the website. And we can choose the color that we want this to stand in. Do you want to go with the standard blue that most websites are? Or do you want to go with something a little more outstanding, like maybe red? And what this does is when the customer gets this as a paper 
invoice, and they have a smartphone with the right app, they can scan that uh, QR code and go right to your website and say, hey, these guys are good. If you send it to them digitally, they can click on that link and go direct to your website. If you have a disclaimer, you definitely want to show that. Uh, text message that you're getting consent from the customer for texting. Now, if you're not using the texting, you can deselect it. And again, if it's selected, it's going to show up, or if not, it's not going to. Tax details, when you have multiple levels of taxes, high parts labor and subtotals in the total box, well, you can break all that out. Some shops are big on showing the tech name and technician license, and some are not. Um, some shops I know have the techs get cards, and they put them in their cards, and it shows the quality of work, and someone that the customer can t talk to, they have other questions, it personalizes it. So maybe I want to show the tech name. You spend a lot of time going over a customer's vehicle, and you're finding recommendations that should be taken care of, and then they just get lost. Well, if you've been using our software, you know our software automatically takes care of that, putting them in your Mitchell program. But also, let's get them in front of the customer again, that if they didn't do a certain recommendations, that we have a reminder and a date set for them. So clicking on Show Recommendations is going to put this in here, and you can change this uh, just by selecting like I did and put um, uh, something maybe like you need this stuff. Of course, I want to do that. I'm just showing you how easy it is to put it in there. But that's all it takes to change something. So anything that's in a box on this page here, uh, as you're going through, it's something that you can very easily change and put in. We can also assign a color. Now, these are recommendations, so we want to make sure our customer sees them. So let's get a color that definitely highlights it. Any ID client worker on sold revisions could be shown up. And again, you can choose and take away as you wish. Show unsold, this unsold and the sold revisions. And if you have any kind of discount in there, you can put that in there. And if you're state specifics, there's sections that you want to definitely show here. So going through all these screens, remember, you always want to save and close if you're not going on further and you're done. But we're going to keep moving. Social media. Ladies and gentlemen of all uh, people out there listening, social media is now the way people advertise. Well, if you have a Facebook page or you have a YouTube uh, videos online or videos you want to share with your customers, you can do it. Get the address to your Facebook page. Hit Show Facebook. Get the address to your Twitter and your LinkedIn. Also, get the address to your YouTube page. Paste it in there and hit Select. And what it's going to do is show those customers these icons on the paperwork. When you send it digitally to a customer, they'll be able to click on those and go right to your website. Well, we're not doing this for free, at least I hope not. So we're going to have to show what methods of pay that we accept. If you like all the major four credit cards, it's as easy as doing this, and they will show up on our document. If you don't like Discover, which I've seen some people now are not liking, along with American Express, as easy as deselecting them, and they don't show up. Do you want to take cash? Well, show cash and go into the fold here. Tell us where the cash is. Take a look here and find that little emblem. There it is right there. Hit OK. Boom. Samples. That's not what I would say. Checks. You're it. No, checks. A lot of shops don't want to show that, so just leave that deselected so it's not a big deal. Affiliate logos. Build your brand further. Do you have ASC certified techs? Well, put that logo in there and they'll come get it, find it inside that um, samples folder and put it in. Are you affiliated to Mitchell? Oh, yeah, you use Mitchell software. Maybe you want to show it. Um, Bolton. You want to put us on there. Cool. And anything else that you want, you just got to develop that little symbol right there and put it in the samples folder and then tell the software to go to that samples and find the one that you want, and it's all good to go. So I'm going to stop right here before I get in the coupon world and save these changes. Then I'm going to go back to my modern and reorganize. Now, mind you, since I made a lot of changes, this, again, would be another time that hitting that reload button is going to be an important thing for me because all the changes that I did have to be rendered. As you can see here, the customer has paid. That's a pretty cool thing. And as you can see, as we go through the document, there goes my watermark in the background, so it helps me stand out. Um, you can see how we have the labor parts and sublet displayed for each line so the customer can see all that 
and information that they need. You can see that I got my Facebook account here. If I send this digitally to a customer, it's going to take them to Facebook, but it's not going to show anything because I'm not signed in here. Uh, if I have videos and uh, web to YouTube, it's going to take them right there. If I have the LinkedIn or whatever else is going on, all those things are now live on the product invoice that you send to a customer. And think about this. You might be griping a little bit about the color ink and stuff like that. I understand, yes, it does cost more money, but if we start persuading customers to have us send their invoices to them digitally, there's quite a few um, advantages. Number one, we save paper and ink. Number two, they have it on their computer, and if they use their vehicle for a, a business, at the end of the year, they have all the files in place that they can actually look up and get to their tax, tax people. Um, and if we send it to them, we can also get their email address so we can send advertisements and whatnot to them. So just think about that. Um, Here's that symbol for bolt on technology. I just put that on there, and if you click on it, again, if they get this a digital format, even on their phones, it'll take them right to your website. Get a little more money out of that website. Get a little more traffic going on. So let's move to the next page. You see that we took a lot out of the cover up there. Don't have a lot of work on this ticket, but check out those recommendations. It is now highlighted in that yellow that I chose, and it stands out very clearly, and look, it even shows the dates of the recommendations when they need to be done. To take it even a step further, this QR code here, customer has a smartphone and scans that QR code. It's going to set that appointment for 214. I think that's uh, Valentine's Day. I'm not sure. Uh, geez, better get the flowers. It sets the appointment right there. And wow, you can't get any easier than that. So these recommendations, we can make it red, we can make it any color we want. They definitely stand out, and it's going to be something to start educating our customers on to make sure that they understand. If there's any decline repairs, nothing better than having it right here with the prices shown so that if there's any issues down the line, hey, look at this. It's right on your invoice. This here, QR code is going to send your customer right to um, your website because that's why I have it linked up to right now. And down here, notice. Cash, Visa, MasterCard, those are all the acceptable types of payment that we accept right now. So there they go. They're good to go. And if you want to add something back into that, let's say you want to do that American Express and that Discover, just go back to Invoice, go back to Credit Cards, go back to here. Again, save and close. Go back home. Reload. Page 2. And ladies and gentlemen, you see how fast it works just like that. So here's the nice thing about this. Go through and practice. Make adjustments. Come back and re-render it. Take a look at it. See what format works for you. Make everything come together. And when you do that, um, you can get as happy as you want with that invoice. So that's a lot of information. Again, take your time and look through all the selections that you can have in there so you can have everything put together as need be. All right, so that's customizing your invoice. That's putting it in your customer's hands. Oh, geez, I got so far ahead of myself, I forgot the last but not least, Mr. Coupon. Yes, everybody cringes about the coupons. Well, here's what we did for you. Well, let's even talk about coupons quickly. My wife believes that if it's in some kind of format that looks like a coupon, it means there's some kind of savings or something that she's getting for less or discounted or whatever. Well, that also grows with a large part of the population. So if I put something on my documents that has something like this, a lot of people are going, ooh, that's worth something. But check this out. If you've been using our software and you just came into it, you now text. Why not just put a message on it? So each one of these could just be a message to your customer, you know, we're closed on July 4th or whatever. And they're as easy as changing as just like selecting whatever's in there. And for example, my usual low, low price for a trans flush, that's my normal price right there. Well, guess what? It just went up. Just by selecting it and typing in what you need, uh, you're done. You just changed your coupon. So just as easy as selecting and typing in new information, you change it. And why not put your regular everyday low, low prices out there? That way you're training your customer to understand it. When that flush comes up, they probably already know what the price is. So just by putting these things on here doesn't mean they're a discount. But again, if you want to put a discount on there, you can. Your shop name, that's going to pull right out of your database, but if you want to change your dates down here, again, select and um, change it as you wish. And you want to get really crazy with the coupons? 
the advanced coupons. What these do here is they look on today's recommendations and today's services. And based on what's in today's recommendations and services, if we have a, a battery service being recommended, that's going to take away one of these three static um, coupons. So these guys show up by themselves automatically. But if anything that we put down here, and we can add things as easily as going into there, finding the category that we need to get to. Let's say we want to do uh, tire rotation is a good one. And you recommend it for the next visit. Also, spelling is also a very big thing. Put your description here, rotate tires, blah, blah, blah. Just hit OK, and there it is. So we have a recommendation for a tire rotation. That's going to come up. And notice, I never even put a price on it. You know, I could put something like uh, 1995 on it. Again, I have to put that over a popular dollar sign in there. And whatever, that easy. All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, if you don't want any advanced coupons, you got to blank all these buggers out. And as easy as doing blanking as this, this, yep, that's it. So if you don't want these and you just want the free static to show up all the time, you got to empty all these spaces. So let's click on Show Coupons. Let's make sure we hit the click Save and Close. And let's go back and re-render that. Reload it. Go to page two, to the bottom. And there you are. None of the operations that I have my advanced coupons are showing up right here, but all my other coupons, my static ones, are showing up all the time. Um, question I have here is how many coupons are there? Well, you have three static ones, these guys right here. And if we, um, if you got our, what do you call it, our Jumpstart program, you're going to find that there's quite a few of them pre-built automatic ones in there or the smart ones. But you can build in as many as you want. The thing is, these guys are going to wind up on every ticket if there's no smart coupons. If there is smart coupons, you got to have that recommendation or that service on today's invoice for it to be pulled over. So you can go pretty wild with that and add as many as you wish. All right. That, ladies and gentlemen, is invoices customization. Uh, tech worksheet. I don't know how many people are really using tech worksheets at this point in time, um, but if you want to customize them, you can add color and all sorts of stuff to them. And all you have to do is, for example, the colors. This is your text color, and this is what the field behind the text color is going to be. So if I have text color of black, and I want it to really stand out. And again, you need a color printer to do this. Just to show you what this does for you, go to my tech worksheet. And you see how it's got the black background. And of course, that's going to chew up an awful lot of ink. So you don't know if you're actually going to want to do that or whatnot. But let's go ahead and change something else. Here's the way I like to do this. For example, if you don't want some text, you want to, again, you want to save money on text and you don't really want to sew. If the technician gets the worksheet, um, uh, does he really need to see sublet information on there? Well, maybe he does, but maybe he doesn't. But if you just turn this to white, it's not going to print anything on sublet because you just changed the ink to white. There's no white ink. Uh, if there's notes or recommendations and stuff on there, you can change the colors. If there's a memo on there and you want to make sure everyone sees it again, you can highlight it. And you can do it again in red, maybe uh, memos for damage, and do it white so it stands out. Customer abbreviated information. If it's a multi-page document, let's save a little paper. Click there. Again, save paper. And if you don't want your text being able to contact your customers, you can hide that customer information. Again, when I select it, that's what it's going to do. For the technicians, display technicians for line items, who's assigned. Pay hours instead of schedule hours. Maybe you don't want that on there, so deselecting that. Display tech hours on each tech line so they know how much they're supposed to get paid. Display technicians below the vehicle history line. So when a history prints out, you want to be able to show the technicians that did the work, or you choose not to. Maybe uh, you've got people that have left. Uh, work perform, labor details. And this takes you out of your canned jobs. You want to make sure all the details of what we did shows up or what we're going to be doing. Display cause and correction lines. What this does is lines the paper so your technician can handwrite across it. And display your time. This is an important thing, I think, for the tech to know because if we don't tell him when that vehicle is done, he may not get it done in time. So let's put it on there. So change, always hit that save and close. Go back up and re-render. 
And again, you can print this from Quick Vehicle or you can print it right from here. And now let's go through notice how I changed ink on that to make it a little different. I put all the lines in there that weren't on there before. And we made it up so the technician, the hours that they're actually working on the ticket are showing up and uh, other information as such. And again, this is a multi-page document. You can very easily scan through and see all that. Recommendations can come and go, but I like that because if the technician's doing an inspection, he might be able to refer back to a recommendation and say, yo, um, uh, we recommended it before and it's in worse shape today, so maybe we should get that customer to buy it. And then finally, I didn't turn history on. But before we go to history, let's check something else out. I know there's a question out there, you just have to hang for a few moments. History. If you put a zero in there, history is not going to show up anywhere. Just to give you a heads up, that's one of the ways of making it not show up at all. My recommendation is put the work in there for three years. Now, again, if you haven't had Mitchell for three years, you're not going to see three years. Whatever amount of time you have Mitchell for is going to be displayed. When a history gets printed or looked at, here it's going to display in chronological order, and with this selected, only labor items are going to show up. So if I have parts or something else up there, that's not going to show up. If I deselect that, everything by date, chronological order is going to show up. If I choose to look at it by category, so like my lube oil filter category, my diagnostic category, I can do that. And by selecting here, I can see only the most recent results or show service not performed where app applies and show labor items related. I find this to be a little clunky, so I prefer to date. And here's what I suggest. I'm kind of zinging through this, because the best way for you to see what this is is actually choose these items and display a history as it's displayed. Uh, we got vehicle history here. Let's hit save. And you go down to vehicle history here and take a look at it. And of course, I choose a vehicle that doesn't have much of any history on it because it's all a demo. But you'll see how it displays things in a different format when you show that. So um, a good, cool little tool, three years, date and time, labor items only, and that's the way it should be. Uh, Iqbal, I'm going to have to clean that categorization because you know what, as I went through this, I realized that I'm going to need to get a little better um, idea what you're looking for in that one. So I'm going to hang that question out there for a little bit. All right. So they're asking how to characterize um, the different jobs and how they're going to be left out on the ticket. And I don't fully understand it, so we're going to come back to that in a little bit. All right. Because it's a lot to cover, and I want to make sure I get through the most of the information. So tech worksheet, vehicle history, both covered. Are there any questions besides those two? I mean, hopefully a lot of you folks aren't using the tech worksheets anymore and you're going to mobile manager, so you don't have to worry about that, but that's, you know, that's something that's out there. Talking about mobile manager, this is where the inspections are built. So quick question out to you folks before I move on. How many of you do have mobile manager out there? I have 22 people on board. I'm curious to see how many of you find folks actually have mobile manager and that way it gives me an idea how in-depth to go with it and go over some of the details. And also, I have a poll question that I promised. That's going out there at the same time. So if you take a look at that poll question and answer that for me, and tell me how many of you guys have Mobile Manager so we can see how deep we need to go through that. Now, of course, a Mobile Manager will go through it a lot deeper, but I'll give you a good idea what's going on. All right, 67% uh, have voted at the, on the poll question. And that's moving up nicely. I have a couple people with mobile manager, so I'll go over it briefly. Looks like a majority does not. And on the poll question, we have 86% voted. There's a few of you still out there. Okay, and I'm going to be closing that poll question down in five, four, three, two, one. And 95% of you voted, 95% said that you see the option of having a, a totally customizable invoice as being the great way to go. And I highly agree with that. Make your shop stand out from a lot of the other shops that are just using those plain black and white pictures. Okay, inspections. Customize multi-point inspections. Here's a couple of quick things for you since not everybody's on board, just a few of you. We will provide you with some inspections, okay? 
uh, and you can go through that list there and look at each inspection. You can, you can use our inspections and break them open and do whatever you wish with them. One of the things I always like to point out before you do anything is go to that in store. Go to the store that you see right here. And a lot of people don't go there just for the fact that they see the word store, which means more money. Well, it should be called go to library. Uh, maybe because it doesn't fit in there, that's why they just stay with store. But everything you see here is online and free for you to grab. Uh, for example, these are inspections that Bolton built. But every other inspection you see on this list, and take a look at how big this list is, and you can look at it on your own time. These are all shops, and we have thousands of shops using our software, have built these inspections. As a matter of fact, one of the things I do need to point out to you folks, too, is that now these inspections can be turned into paper inspections, too. And I'll show you that, too. But check this out. Somebody out there, well, I know who it is, Mr. Ayers, Automotive Courtesy Inspection has been downloaded 810 times. And what this does for you folks is this guy has built this pretty incredible inspection sheet. And you see all the different things that are here. And again, it's free and no charge. But look at this. Road test. This is the points that he has. The first four things are the notes that the technician finds on the road test with the brakes. Next few things are his recommendations of what he expects that we should do. And additional notes and additional recommendations are all in there. So it's very easy for you to build an inspection where someone's done most of the work for you. And as you can see, this is pretty dang comprehensive. All right. So that's good to go. And all you need to do to get it is click on there and download it. And before you know it, there it is. There's your courtesy inspection right on here. There's a there's that brake system check. And there's all your points that I just went through with you. There's the recommendations that the technician can have. And we can even hook it up that a red or a yellow uh, symbol gets clicked on. It's automatically going to pull a can job. This is what you have to hook it up to is the can jobs in your basic system. And also, you have to hook it up to your categories, your intervals, and it's already got a name. But most of the work's already done. So I highly recommend those of you with mobile manager that want to start looking into this. Uh, go on there and find yourself a one. That IRS one, you can you can actually take it apart. You know, real briefly show you. For example, I don't want to see these instruments. I think this is a little overkill here, uh, looking at all the instrument panels. So I can just easily delete the whole group just like this. And there you go. So you can go in there and change it, but if that's too much to do, you can also change the order of these things by clicking and sliding them around. As you see that black line come up, so you want to check your wiper washer operation, etc. Or if you feel that you don't need something here, for example, fog lights, you can toss it over here and it's off and you've kept that point. So there's a couple of little odds and ends there for you to take a look at. And you can control, you can actually export and import these inspections nowadays and send them to your sister store if you have one. And these are all the different options for setting this up. So we're going to save those for mobile manager, but I always like to spend a little bit of time in there and show you what you can do. And welcome station, very basically is a little kiosk that we have. And this is where you basically set that up and just very briefly. Um, you can put in the jobs that you want to offer to customer. They can come up here and they get this little kiosk and they type in that they want to do inspection and stuff. Uh, you can have jobs sold by the season. We're in winter right now. Cooling system and brakes and winter inspection, all this stuff gets put in through Report Pro. They go right up on there. And you have a different set of uh, sales for each item. Weather up sales. Well, it's been pretty cold here the last couple of days. So I have heater operation put in there for 1995 and adjust tire pressures, something that my customer might want to um take care of. So the kiosk is all set up from in here. And it's something that a lot of people don't have right now, so I won't be spending a lot of time unless you have any questions. Commission. You offer a commission to your service advisors or your techs or whatever. All you have to do is decide what the threshold is, where it starts to kick in, put that in. Click on the person's name and put in what you want them to get. If they want to get five, well, 0.5% would stink. Uh, 5%, and there you go. It's automatically going to calculate for you on that customer. Okay. So basically, zinging through your customization tools. Let's go to tools. Inspection Manager. If you have Report Pro, 
uh, I'm sorry, Mobile Manager and Report Pro. This is where we're going to take a look at our inspections. And uh, this is a great tool. And again, this will be covered in the Mobile Manager class very briefly. If you uh, go here, you can look up and look at any type of inspection that you might have had. And you go by line item by line item, take a look at the tech inputs, take a look at the pictures, and you can send that out to the customer. You can look at it all right in here. You can send it by text, email, et cetera. And you got a variety of ways of looking at it. That's for uh, Mobile Manager. Workflow Manager. You guys on Mitchell, this is great. What you see in front of you is a graphical display of the work in my shop. If it's blue, it's an estimate. If it's red, it's an RO. If it's uh, green, it's an invoice. You know what? I don't need to know about an invoice because it's done. I can just deselect it by clicking on there, as you see. I can display these jobs by who's working on them. I can display these by statuses, and all the statuses come right out of the Mitchell system. So if you go look under statuses, you'll see all that in there. I prefer the technician way of looking at it because if I have free text, I have it all right in front of me. If I have a lot of work orders going on right now, all I need to do is punch in the name of the customer I'm looking for, as easy as this, and it highlights the one I'm looking for. If I want to display by all my service advisors or just one service advisor, like Frank's not doing anything today or Frank's out, I want to make sure all his work's being handled, I can do that or show everybody. And if I'm looking for a specific technician, I can very easily just show that tech. So you have numerous ways of looking at this. There's further information. You got your, not, your RO invoice or estimate number. You have the vehicle type. You have many, how many hours are hanging out or are supposed to be on that. And you have the expection time when it's supposed to be done, when it's supposed to be completed. And if you click on there, you have even more information. You can see the car photo. You can print the invoice from here, or you can compose a text message and send it right out to the customer right from here. So, for example, Douglas Johnson's finished. I can click on there, get on my templates and message manager, and tell him vehicle pickup. Send his message right out to him and say, hey, your vehicle's ready to go. Come and get it. Piece of cake. But here's another cool thing. Let's say uh, Melissa's not doing well and she's not going to get to the Sang Lee. I can click, select, and drag this over and assign it to another tech just like that. And this estimate, you know what? That's got to wait to tomorrow. So if I sign it over here and let it go, it on the signs it, boom. So you have full ability to look at how your shop flow is going and keep tabs on it. And I think it's a great graphical way to do it. And I think it's a very underutilized tool. So hopefully you folks will use it. All these reports down here. Out of all these, you might go, geez, there's none, I, there's none that does what I want. I need to do it something else. I need to come up with something else. Well, we give you the chance of going here and building it yourself and query builder. A little bit involved, so if you have any questions, uh, your best best to holler and give us a heads up so we can take you through this. But it's very basic, and you got to really think out what you want to do and what you're looking for. So if you really want to get in that, let us know. Register tires. It's federal law, guys, folks, ladies and gentlemen. If you put tires on any vehicle in the United States, you're supposed to register so the Firestone, Finagle, Finasco, or whatever you want to call it doesn't happen again. So watch why this is a really great tool. Put some federal tires on this customer's car. Window opens. Look at that. Customer's information is already in there. Look at this. Your shop information is already in there. Watch. Four tires. Same dot code. Life's great. Choose tire type. Go over here. Hit submit. You just submitted your tire report to that for that vehicle. Done. No, no other craziness, no going on trying to find a website and all that stuff, no filling in the customer or your shop information. It's all finished. Categories. Our experience, unfortunately, is that many shops don't use categories in the proper method. For example, this maintenance one that I just went to. Every maintenance item that you do in a car gets dumped in there. And if you think of a category as a file or a box, if I do oil changes and air filters and fuel filters and all sorts of stuff and I throw in a box, don't I have to pull that box apart and find out what's in there? And when I run reports, they're not smart enough to know, know how to pull that stuff apart. So we give you this tool that if, unfortunately, you've not been doing your um, 
categories properly, you have a way of fixing it. You can go there and choose that category and unassign that by clicking here. And what that does is all those air filters, fuel filters, and everything are going to be taken out. Go back to the assign category screen and let's take a look. Let's go with air filter. I do a search, type that in there, hit return. And I find those air filters that I pulled out of there. So for example, Cabin air, Napa cabin air filter. Look at it. I've done 248 of them. All right, I want to put them in my air filter column. So what I do is I click on that with my mouse and I right click. And look, I have air filter, cabin air filter, engine. That's cabin. If I click here, it's going to put all those right in there. So if I go through this step by step and find all my air filters and my cabin filters and put them in there, you see this one's not going to work. Um, but if I find different ones here and I put them all in there, I eventually am going to be able to run very good um, reports on my individual categories at the end of the month. So very simple process, a little onerous, a little time induced, but the thing is, how can you move forward if you're not measuring and you want to definitely be measuring things? Odometer fix. You found out sometime in the past somebody unfortunately put tents in there. That number just became wacky too big, and you figure out that that's a problem. So all you have to do is go back there, find a repair, open S tool up, hit OK. No more uninvoicing and reinvoicing all the repair orders after that. It's already done, just like that, fixed. This year is aimed at Goodyear stores. Basically, you have a point of sale that you have to do a report. This will take you right through there and do that for you so you guys know how to use that. Just go in there and check it out. You have a customer who's come in, and they've been bringing in the red, red Taurus forever. All right, so you got Andre, bring in Subaru, all right? And turns out that the car got totaled, and they bought another Subaru that looks exactly like it, but no one actually caught on. Well, all this history that needs to be moved, all you have to do is put in the vehicle that you need to put it to. And I'm just uh, doing some odds and ends here to show you. So that's the vehicle we want to. So all we have to do is select the order and you can see there's multiple repair lines on that order it automatically chooses it and if I hit perform history transfer all those chosen items are going to take out of this history and move to this history I mean there's a variety of different ways that we get the history in the wrong vehicle or we maybe even move the customer the customer buys this customer sells this customer buys a vehicle we can move the history of that new customer name by putting it in the system think about how much time is being saved by that all right price list do not attempt. If you feel that you need to move your prices for your parts and everything into your, um, uh, our software and, and Mitchell, this is such a big project that you definitely need to give us a holler and get guidance because if you don't, this will break things. It will really ruin your day, ruin your software and everything if it's not done correctly. So if you choose to import a price list in there so you can make it work with our program and Mitchell, please contact us first because we don't want you to break things. So there's a quick run through of the tools. Lots of great flexibility up there. Um, so along those lines, uh, just as I always say that, a question pops up. So while that pops up, I'll send out another poll to see how you folks are doing. Odometer, can it be changed? Yes. It's actually every, that, that's the beauty thing of that. That whole odometer tool right there fixed, that is done on posted invoices. So that's the beauty of it. Those of you that know that you've had to go back and find the invoice and then unpost, 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 make the change and repost everything after that, that automatically takes care of all that posting and unposting. So you don't have to go postal when you're doing it. <laughs> that's a bad joke, I know. All right. So anyway, right now it's out there. You folks are taking a look at that. 65% uh, has voted yes so far, having access to all these reports. And please take your time and look at what's going on there. And if you've been using your categories, et cetera, right, it's definitely going to help. 70%, 100% yes. We'll be closing that down very shortly, and that's all good. All right, going once, going twice, going three times, 75% of you voted, 100% yes. And yes, I agree, that's a great thing. So let's take a look at something else here, settings. In settings, general, this is where we tell your software 
where to look for that report. So in that bot folder is a thing called reports. That's where it's going to look so it knows how to function. If you want to change it from a lighter or darker thing, it's as easy as doing that. That didn't work, did it? Let's try that again. Go dark. There we go. You can see how that's the difference between light and dark. If one looks better than the other, that's great. Quick reports. Here is where we're telling that when we click on the quick invoice, it's going to print the modern version of the um, modern version format of our invoice, and it's going to send it to our main printer. Okay, so you want to make sure that your main printer is set up. And if you want to send two copies because you have a customer sign one and you keep one, you can do that. And if they're multi-pages, select this here, so page one, two, three, and four will print together, and you'll have to go there and um, separate them. And quick vehicle, if you're printing tech worksheets, you can tell it to print a tech worksheet, okay, or any one of these other things that you have up here. And you can have it automatically do a, a custom multi-point inspection right here. So you can actually do that where any one of these other things. If you don't want anything here, if you only want to do a tech worksheet, just blank that out and it won't do it, and it'll send it to the main printer. So that's where you set up your printing. Virtual printer. If you turn this on and install virtual printer, when you're in Mitchell, and you go up there and hit F6, it'll automatically print, or if you print through Mitchell, it'll automatically print straight through our software without having to come into Report Pro. And that'll install itself. And emails we saw earlier, this is where you would set up your email client, be it Outlook, Windows, or whatever and fill all this information here, and that's going to set it up so that whatever you send an email to a customer, it comes right from your computer automatically. So I just basically went through these four settings. If you have our mobile technology, this is where you're going to connect your tablets right up to your computer and scan that, and that's something we'll talk about when we get to Mobile Manager. And these are all rules for Mobile Manager there. All right, so Frank's asking about the Bolton University before I finish the webinar, and give me a moment, I will talk about that. Uh, also, I get a question, the vehicle repair cost per mile or per day, is that report available? It is not that I know of, but let me take you to one other thing that I need to cover under the help menu. This here, if you go through this list and you don't see a report and you think it's very valid, you can write, click here, and it's going to open up your email client. It's going to open up an email, and it's going to give you an address that you're going to put in what you want to do. So maybe you want to have a report what the cost for mileage is, et cetera, based on the work that's being done. You submit all the, your criteria, what you want for that, and what happens here is that comes up to our development team. They'll take a look at it. Now, if they find that other people requested that and there's enough requests for something, so this is where you get all your buddies together and have everybody request the same thing, They'll look at it for development. Now, if it's something you definitely need and you see big value in it, you let us know that that's that important to you, and we'll give you an idea what it's going to cost investment-wise from you because you're going to wind up paying for the development of it. But we'll build that to your specifications, and then we'll tell you how much it's going to take. And that's based on how 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 what's the word I'm looking for? How involved it is, and how long it takes to build that. So that's a big thing that's going on right um, right there. So if you click on there, it's going to open email. And again, because my email client's not open and it's installed here, it's not going to go. But that's a great place to go and request. And if you have a number of shops that want that same thing, put it in there because we rank things that we develop by how many requests we get for them. While we're in the uh, help side, everything I've covered here, if you click on the um, how-to guide, it's going to take you right to Report Pro. I'm going to take you through all the basics right in here. So you can set that up as you need be and go through. Great resource. What's new? When you see an update come, you definitely want to get it. Please take a look at what's new here and see if you're up to release 169. And the reason for that is because if you look over, you look at the dates here, we've had quite a few updates to Report Pro over the last couple of months. So take a look in there and make sure you're up to speed. This will automatically open up after you do an update, but it's a great way of seeing what level you're up to. If you're having issues, software's not working, whatever reason, you've done everything you could, hit here, put in your issue, put in a good description. This is not a good description, but just showing you the point. Hit OK, and what it's going to do is open you up. 
to a, a screen here. It's going to download a little application. It's going to let us get inside your computer and fix it from the inside. Much more efficient way of fixing things. This takes you right to our website. When you get to our website, this is a great place to be. And all of you find Mitchell people. I didn't mention it really much, but Jumpstart. If you want to have, um, and you're brand new to Mitchell, go to this website here where Jumpstart is and look into this because we provide you with all new categories and all new ways of making your software work great. So that's a quick little uh, commercial right there. It's called Jumpstart. Take a look on our website for that. And you'll see that you can put in over 300 pre-built jobs, etc., all with a couple of clicks of the mouse. All right, back to our application. Uh, videos. In the next 30 to 60 days, this is going to make a major change. Every product is going to be broken down into snippet videos that are as short as 30 seconds to as long as five minutes. What do you want to learn? Well, you want to learn how to um, build a new invoice. You go to the Report Pro, you go to uh, Customize Invoice, you go to Header. Look at the video and watch what it says, and it's going to take you through it basically step-by-step step like I just did, and you can run that video right on the same screen as you do it. And that stuff should be appearing in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. And I already went over to Request. All right, so a quick question out there because we're running up against time. What is the Baldwin University that a lot of you may have received an email about? Uh, we've had a lot of demand for uh, uh, actual uh, uh, classroom situation, and here in Bolton in Pennsylvania, we've developed a classroom where we're setting up our first Bolton training, which is going to occur in February. So anybody that's interested, you should get in hold of Frank Dragoni. Um, let him know that you're interested. And actually, let me do this and give you an email address. Um, we are filling up the classes pretty quickly. I had a pretty darn big response. And that should be fdragoni at boltontechnology.com. That's his email address. And he can give you the particulars, but basically it's a two-day class where we're going to take you from the basics of setting up your management system, just like I just mentioned, Jumpstart, getting that all in place, um, and then going through and seeing each one of our products in extreme detail and going through how to use each product. Uh, you're going to walk out of here knowing the product as well as we do. We're the ones that develop it. We're the ones that are coming up with the ways of using it. And we're going to spend the better part of two days showing you how to do it. And um, registration is currently open. There is a first class, I believe, is February, February. Uh, arrival can be as early as the 16th of February. You got a full day of class on the 17th and up to 3 o'clock on Saturday, and it's actually here in Pennsylvania, and it's going to be a really great course. Uh, we've put a lot of time into it, and you're going to walk out of here a lot more educated on how well our software works when you leave. So, again, that email address, hopefully I sent it out. Does the course cost anything? Yes. Um, I'm not absolutely sure since I'm not handling that side of it, but I, I think, well, your best bet is to give Frank a holler and let him know because he can let you know there is a cost related. It is a, a few hundred dollars, and the more people that come in, the, the cheaper it does. It does decrease after your first person. Um, but there's been a, quite a demand for it, and it's filling up pretty darn fast. So that's that F. Dragoni at Baldwin Technology is the person to send an email to. He's a little swamped, but he's the guy that can give you all the details on that. Uh, basically, Frank's question is if I choose my invoice and I want to do the modern, if you remember me going into settings here, and when you print out, you go to general settings, get that screen out of the way, go to quick reports. This is where you choose it right here, and that should print modern every time. And also, that's also triggered off that quick invoice button right there, but that's your fastest and best way of printing that, or if you do the virtual print, that will go right through automatic too. All right, all right, that's it, folks. Well, good luck out there, and please use our software to the best of your ability, because you will see a definite return on things that, uh, if you use our software. All right, it's John Burkhauser, really drying the mouth here, signing out from you guys. Hope you're all well and take care, and I'll be talking to you some of you very shortly, and if not, hopefully in the near future. All right, bye bye.